<coughs> in the night sky, there appeared to be a fleet of triangular aircraft from the size of them. Oh, sorry, before I start, this is Emery. <laughs> it would help if I explain. I know it, so I know where she is. Emery is the one that you're with. She's at Area 51, where she's not supposed to be at, um, because they do cordon you off a long way away, but she has a view over. Um, and she's there for just, just checking, just in case there are anything going on. Um, she also has a person in her ear, which is Dink. And Dink is her eyes on what's happening around the world. And she's just relaying to him what she's seen. They are looking for military aircraft, and that's not what they find. In the night sky, there appeared to be a fleet of triangular aircraft. From the size of them, she calculated there were at least three lengths of a football field each. A multicoloured light was situated at each of the three points of the ship's shape. They flashed out a rhythmic pulse that was almost hypnotic. The lone light in the centre was a pure white beam. It was obviously those beams that had flooded the area with light. Only one remained now, directed toward the ground. Emery tried to count how many ships she could see. She was getting two, maybe three, hidden in the darkness. The first explosion hit and blew Emery flat on her back. Debris flew wildly into the air, and it was only when the dust settled that Emery could see that a large crater had been left in the middle of the airbase. Holy shit! She watched with a dawning horror as small, saucer-shaped objects flew out from the belly of the bigger ships. They just appeared as if they'd been cloaked from view. All of them took aim on the vast area below. Whatever weaponry they were equipped with cut through the ground with ease and laid waste to any buildings in the way. Within seconds, the area was obliterated, all the buildings erased, and the ground was nothing more than a mass of huge craters. You're not safe there. Thank you, Captain Obvious, Emery muttered. I can't exactly start my engine while they're bombing the bejesus out of the base below. Something caught her eye, and she saw a thin light appear out of nowhere, deep from within one of the craters. Emery watched as people started scrambling over the crater's edge. I can see people evacuating. They're coming directly out of the crater, so there has to be something down there. Emery could do little more than watch, as the saucers emitted a thin beam of light directly into the people's path. They stood paralysed by it until one by one they started to rise off the ground. They were suspended in the air as if held on strings wielded by a master puppeteer. Then, without warning, they were sucked up into the saucer and the light extinguished. I don't think that's the military, Emery. Dink's voice was unusually quiet in Emery's ear. But I don't believe in this, Emery whispered, watching as the saucers shot up into the air at an alarming speed. It disappeared as quickly as it appeared. Here, then gone. Just like the people it had taken aboard. I don't think you have a choice. It's too late, Emery. They're here.